Hi, I'm Roxy and uh, today I'm going to show you how to bring custom paper textures into Corel Painter and how you'd use them. Um, first I'll quickly run through the basic process just in case that's all you wanted to know and then after that I'll flesh it out more so that you can get the best results. I should mention I'm using Corel Painter 2021 for this demonstration. Um, if you have a different version, then the process may be slightly different, but hopefully not. So, you open up the texture you want to import in Corel Painter. You draw a selection around it, and then select Capture Paper from the Papers panel. You then give the paper a name that you'll recognize. The crossfade slider is for when the texture you've brought in isn't seamless. And by seamless, I mean when you tile the image, there shouldn't be any harsh lines separating each tile. A seamless texture is designed in such a way that it just continues across the tiles seamlessly. Um, for example, this texture you'll see isn't seamless. So you can see where one tile begins and another ends. While this tile is seamless, even if I zoom in, you can't really tell where the edges are. So if your texture isn't seamless, you might want to drag the crossfade slider to the right. And what that does is it fades the edges so that it's not so noticeable that the texture isn't seamless. And that's it. You click OK and the paper appears in the library. Um, but now I'm going to get into the details, how to create your own paper library, the best size and types of images to use, the best brush settings to use, and a couple of other tips. If you're like me, and you don't want your custom stuff mixed up with the default stuff, you'll want to create your own paper library, which will appear as a folder in this window. This is mine, Roxy's paper library. To create your own library, you go over to the book icon in the corner of the paper panel. If you mouse over it, it says manage libraries. If you click and hold on it, a context menu pops out and you're going to want to select New Paper Library. You give it a name and you click OK and there you go. You'll notice it pre-fills your library with whichever texture you had selected last. It doesn't let you delete it unless you have another paper texture in there. Uh, it needs at least one paper to function, I guess. You can also delete the whole library by going back here, clicking Remove Paper Library, and making sure you have the right library selected. When you're looking for good images to use as papers for optimal results, you ideally want a seamless image. Um, a really good place to get nice looking seamless textures is here. I'll put a link in the description, and if you have other sources, please comment them. Uh, you can also find tileable images at most stock sites like this. You just type seamless, and if your budget is tight, you might get lucky and they have free options. Not all of them will actually be seamless because sometimes the tag is applied incorrectly by whomever uploaded it, but in most cases, uh, you'll find you'll find some good stuff. So what to do if you found a great texture like this, but it's not seamless? Um, you can rely on Corel Painter's crossfade, of course, but for best results, um, depending on the texture, you might be able to jimmy it into being seamless, and this is how you do it. You open the picture in Corel Painter, you duplicate the canvas twice, go up to Canvas, Canvas Size, now essentially what we want to do is double the width and the height of the canvas. And even if you're like me and your maths is crap, you don't even need a calculator because all you're going to be doing is taking the width up here and adding it to either the left or the right, um, and then take the height and add it to either the top or the bottom. You click OK. Then on the first layer, shift it horizontally to the edge of the page and flip it horizontally. I'm sure you can figure out what we're going to do next. You duplicate these two layers, move them up to the top, and flip them vertically. Now you have a perfectly seamless image. Just flatten it and maybe consider uh, cloning out some obvious mirrored elements like these. Um, it's a much less convoluted procedure to do in something like Photoshop because 
you just use the clone tool but if you want to do that in Corel Painter you can you just select a piece of the image you want to use to cover it up Control C to copy Control V to paste on a new layer and then move it over the part you want to cover and then finally you fuzz out the edges with a soft eraser so once you're happy you flatten everything down draw a selection around it and select capture paper from the papers panel and now we can test it that grain is huge so I'm just going to adjust the scale down here in the papers panel oops looks like we found a seam no biggie though you just go back to the original and find the offending edge and trim it off let's test the new one another seam this one's probably on the top There we go, it looks like there's no glaring seams anymore. There's some slight imperfections where we mirrored the original image, but uh, in a practical painting, the texture is only going to be popping through in parts. Most of it will be flat paint because the more you paint in an area, the more opaque the paint becomes and you'll be seeing less of the paper. So what we've created here is perfect and uh, I'll include it along with some others in a link in the description. If you've been following along with me and uh, it doesn't look as nice on your end, it's probably because your brush settings need to be tweaked. And I'll get into detail about that later, so don't fret. But first, let's look at one more way to get cool textures, and that's by creating them. As you may have realized by this point, you can draw and paint textures yourself. Most of these textures I created myself. Here's some bende dots and some pinstripes. These are files I created elsewhere, pulled them in and captured them as papers. I like to start with a 512 pixel squared canvas and then I make and fill a selection, duplicate the layer, move it around. Uh, in Painter you can align, but I don't think you can distribute, which is when you space things evenly. That's why I didn't do it in uh, Corel Painter. So just use whatever graphics tool feels comfortable to you. Um, but uh, as I said, I'll make all the ones I created available too. So if you don't feel like creating them, that's also fine. Uh, if you want to create less pixel perfect, more random paper textures, but still seamless, you might also have fun trying mirror painting. You can access that mode by clicking the mirror painting option on the side. You can see this line down the center that indicates that whatever you draw on one side, it'll do the same on the other side. Observe. Now if you go up here and click horizontal plane instead, then it mirrors the top and the bottom. And you can switch it off, do a bit of free scribbling in the middle. By the way, this brush I'm using is part of a brush pack I created and you can grab the whole pack if you want. I'll put a link in the description. Um, I did previously uh, make it available in, in another video, but in case you missed that, I'll link it again. And then you might want to turn on uh, both horizontal and vertical, so whatever you do in one quadrant, it'll mirror in the others. And when you're done, make a selection and capture the paper. So let's see how it turned out. Here we go, not the prettiest texture I've ever made, but you get the idea. So now that you have these paper textures, I'm going to show you a few ways to use them, as well as uh, a critical limitation painter has that you probably want to be aware of ASAP. So there's two main ways you can use these textures. The first is creating a brush that has grain um, which means any one of these. If you don't know how to create brushes, I suggest watching at least the first episode of my brush creation tutorial. Link in description. Um, the second way is applying a dab stencil to your brush. And we'll go through both of those now. So uh, to keep things simple, I'm using a circular dab with the default single stroke type, the cover method. 
and I've chosen grainy soft cover. I've set the opacity to pen pressure and I've obviously calibrated my pressure to suit my own uh, a heavy hand or light handedness in, in, in my case. So how I got the texture on the brush is I just came up here to where it says grain paper selector clicked on that and I've got this drop down and I selected the texture there. Um, I can swap this out for any other texture on the fly and if this is looking familiar that's because it's literally the same stuff as this. This is the paper panel this is the paper panel this is the grain panel, this is the grain panel, literally the same stuff. So with the settings as they are at the moment, um, you'll see I've set the grain to 100%. So it's, a, it's like a constant amount of grain coming through. And the only way you're going to get like kind of a thicker paint is to just keep on painting over the same spot. If I turn that down, you're obviously going to get more paint and less grain. The other thing that you can do is set an expression, like pressure. Now if I press softly, I mostly get paint. If I press hard, you can see just on the edge there, the pressure is starting to come through. Um, what you'd probably want to do in this regard is set the minimum grain slider. So that sets the level of grain at the minimum, uh, at, the, at the softest pressure level. So if we pump that up, then uh, we, we're starting to get a little bit of uh, more texture on the brush. But what I prefer to do is turn that down and just reverse the pressure by clicking this little uh, invert grain expression. And what that does is now if I press softly, I get maximum grain. And if I press hard, I get paint. Um, and that makes more sense to me because it's like when you're painting in real life, um, if you just brush lightly over the canvas, the canvas texture will come through because the paint is thin. Uh, if you press harder, the paint gets applied thicker and uh, you don't see the canvas texture. So it just seems more natural to, uh, to reverse the pressure. The grain jitter and smoothness really didn't find a whole lot of uh, uh, difference in that. But these two toggles down here do make a fair bit of difference. So this first one, what it does is it randomly rotates the grain. I'm just going to pick a pinstripe texture so you can uh, see more clearly. Let's just choose a different color. So if I make um, marks on the page, you'll see that uh, it's, it's kind of not exactly at the same angle. Whereas if I toggle this off, it doesn't matter which way I go, you'll see it's always exactly in place. There's no uh, lines overlapping like it was there. And uh, a random grain position, what that does is um, each dab of a stroke, it randomly positions the grain within that dab. So um, with these two toggles, um, you might want to play with uh, testing them on and off and both or none because uh, you can sometimes get drastically different results with your textures and you never know you might get one of those happy little accidents as the late great Bob Ross would have put it. Everything underneath these two toggles uh, represents the, the paper panel and here you can change the angle, the scale, the contrast and the brightness on the fly. Um, the angle and the scale is is probably the most useful. Having this so easily accessible is quite nice for the odd occasion where you need to make adjustments on the fly. Uh, using the scale toggle strategically can prevent the texture from flattening out your work. Uh, the angle toggle is also obviously awesome. For example, I didn't have to make vertical and lateral and diagonal pinstripe textures. I just made one and then I can set the angle to however I want. If anyone from Corel happens to see this, it would be really nice to have the ability to link the size of the paper to the pen pressure and maybe link the angle to the stroke direction. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Another thing that you can do to avoid the textures flattening out all the work that you put in to make it look 3D is to transform them. 
So just going to hack together a cube so I can show you. Let's pretend this ugly cube is attractive and something you want to apply texture to. You'd paint a flat even area of your texture on a separate layer. You'd select the layer adjuster tool, which is the, uh, the cursor with the plus sign. You come up here to transform and then you select distort. And then you just distort it into place. So obviously this is a, a hack job, but you get the idea. So the other way to, to get a texture onto your brush if you don't have um, any grain on the brush, let's say we, we've got a soft cover brush, is you'd go over here to Dab Stencil and you'd click Apply Dab Stencil and uh, you'd select the paper you want over here. And it's as easy as that to get the texture on your brush, uh, even if you don't have a grain brush. So that's the uh, the dab stencil and uh, you can at any time come up here to the papers panel and adjust uh, these toggles to get different sizes and whatnot. The problem is that there's no permanent way to assign a texture to a specific brush. Um, you know I was a bit of a dumbass I didn't know this and I went and created a whole bunch of texture brushes as you can see here and then the next day when I logged into Corel Painter they were all reset to uh, the default paper texture. I mean I don't know if it is but that seems like a bug to me. Most graphics programs or any graphics program that has a brush engine usually has a way to uh, link a specific texture to a specific brush. So again, if, if anybody from Corel Painter is watching, come on man, <laughs> this is dumb. There should at least be one way to, uh, to keep a brush remembering what texture it had. So uh, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, much obliged if you leave a like and subscribe. Until the next one.